Hey guys, hope you're doing well out there. It's time to catch up on the advertising economy and there's really no better place to start than Meta platforms as we have shares cratering nearly 12% in the after hours. That's despite a phenomenal first quarter report with revenues rising north of 27%. We have earnings growing faster than 100% year over year, but we did get Q2 revenue guidance coming a bit lighter than what Wall Street anticipated. We also have continued growing losses on our reality lab segment as Meta just continues to burn through huge sums of money in that business. But at the same time, you do have continued trends in their family of apps, namely Instagram and Messenger, as more people just continue to use those apps. We'll also take a look at the different news stories surrounding Meta and then analyze this from a chart perspective. This stock is absolutely cutting through a level of support like hot knife through butter and We'll see whether this is a buy the dip moment, whether the trend is really over, and whether this sell-off is an overreaction to this news of Meta's report. As always, if you're new to the channel and find this type of content valuable, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button below. It would be much appreciated. Shares of Meta and that $1.2 trillion valuation taking a pretty big hit in the after hours as you have shares declining. Like we said, nearly 12%. That's a huge move down for a stock that's honestly been on a monster rally over the past, call it year to date. Look, we had revenues come in at $36.5 billion. That was growth of 27% year over year. It did beat estimates on Wall Street by roughly $240 million. The high end on that revenue side for Wall Street was close to $37 billion. So Meta coming in just shy of the high end, beating that average consensus estimate on the revenues. In terms of gap EPS, that came in at $4.71. Again, a pretty substantial beat of 39 cents as Wall Street's average estimate was closer to 436. In fact, 436 would have represented year over year growth of 98%. Meta came in with EPS growth of 114%. That is an absolutely massive beat and just huge signs of growth in Meta's overall business. Now, in terms of guidance for the upcoming Q2, we did get revenues to be in the range of 36.5 all the way up to $39 billion. If we take a look at what Wall Street anticipated, the midpoint was closer to 38.3. So Meta's midpoint guidance, let's say at $38 billion, coming in just shy of the average consensus analyst on Wall Street, which would have been roughly 20% growth. Now, if you were to ask me, this guidance of right around $38 billion on the midpoint is, I would say, a bit conservative. Meta does like to come in and tend to beat on their own guidance as last quarter they guided for revenues to come in somewhere around 36 to $37 billion. And Meta coming in right at 36.5 in this most recent quarter. So I think this guidance slightly conservative, but I think not a huge deal with your midpoint coming in just shy of what analysts had expected on Wall Street. Now, in terms of the different segments, we have the advertising business, which still is the bread and butter over at Meta, printing nearly $36 billion in terms of top line revenues. And that is actually your strongest quarter outside of a Q4 where really advertising tends to be extremely strong for all advertising companies. But outside of a Q4, this $36 billion figure, extremely strong. You see Q1 of 2022, we were at $27.2 billion. And then Q1 of last year, we were closer to 28.3. This is a huge jump up nearly 27% on those advertising revenues. And on top of that, you have phenomenal operating margins from that business as you were able to generate roughly $17.6 billion in operating income. That is close to 48, 49% operating margins just on your advertising business alone. Look, this bread and butter business of Meta is chugging right along and is continuing to perform phenomenally. But you at the same time have a reality lab segment where revenue is really are stalling out. You see quarter over quarter are down substantially, although this was a Q4 year over year, not really up all too much. And then even on a two year basis, you see back in Q1 of 2022, your reality labs revenue were nearly doubled. And so Meta continues to invest heavily in this part of the business, really not seeing any returns, at least as of now. And then because of that, they are burning through roughly $3.8 billion worth of operating losses in one quarter alone. That is just as a Meta shareholder, tough to see how much this company is burning through on an operating basis on their reality lab segment. And look, investors will continue to give this segment a pass as long as the advertising business continues to chug along, continues to have nearly those 50% operating margins. But just the fact that if this company wasn't bleeding through close to three to $4 billion a quarter over the past, call it eight, nine quarters, 
the amount of money this company would be sitting on, probably its valuation would at least, in my opinion, be 20% higher as you have 38% operating margins, which look, still are phenomenal, which are rising on a year over year basis. Last year, we were closer to 25%. But keep in mind, if this Reality Lab segment wasn't bleeding this kind of money, the operating margins for this business would be close to 50%. And they would have nearly $4 billion to spit back to you as the shareholder every quarter. And so just keep that in mind. As a shareholder, you're seeing this company burn through huge sums of money quarter in, quarter out for really no return, at least as of now. And at some point or another, if this revenue number doesn't take off, I think Meta will have to make the decision to just shutter this business completely. Because as of now, in my opinion, it's probably holding the business back, if not at least holding the stock back. But as long as the advertising revenues, like we said, continue to chug along, continue to move in the right direction, investors continue to give a pass on those reality lab segments. And we see the family daily active people. This is the number of people continuing to use either Instagram, Messenger, WhatsApp, or Facebook grew to 3.24 billion people. That is a staggering figure. Just the amount of people using one of their apps on a daily basis absolutely stellar to see still rising seven percent year over year so even though you think facebook has tapped out on its growth yeah they just continue to grow year over year on top of that you also had more ad impressions as that is up 20 percent year over year your price per ad also up six percent all of the advertising metrics just continuing to trend in the right direction and then on top of that really not taking a huge investment in terms of their cost and expenses again at least on that advertising side as you had costs up just six percent and your income from operations were able to grow up by nearly 91% from $7.2 billion now at $13.8 billion. And look, those are our income from operations, but keep in mind on the advertising side, we had nearly $17.6 billion in terms of income from operations. So while these operating margins of 38% look phenomenal, keep in mind the Reality Lab segment still continuing to hold this business back pretty substantially. In terms of the bottom line, we see our net income came up to $12.3 billion over the last three months. That is a jump of 117% year over year and our diluted EPS growing up to $4.71. Again, last year we were just at $2.20. So phenomenal operating profile from Meta this quarter. We have revenues exploding, costs not really budging too much, our income from operations exploding, and then all of that translating down to our bottom line. Just stellar stellar financials over at meta now we also like we said family daily active of people coming up to 3.24 billion users that is a staggering figure you see over the last eight quarters has continued to just rise steadily really a very consistent trend and then in terms of our average revenue per person that is now also up to 11 dollars 20 cents not as high as our q4 like we said where advertising is really haywire and advertising budgets are basically through the roof due to that holiday period but that $11.20 figure in terms of a Q1 is the strongest quarter outside of their Q4. Again, another strong trend to see from Meta. In terms of the statement of income, we said revenue is growing 27% up to $36.5 billion. Like we said, cost of revenue is not really budging all too much. Call it up just 10%. And then your R&D also up to $9.9 .9 billion. Last year, we were at 9.3. In terms of marketing and sales, that actually ticked down to 2.5 and then your GNA coming up to 3.5 last year we were closer to 2.9 and so our total cost and expenses coming up just six percent despite revenues growing 26 percent and so our income from operations like we said coming in at 13.8 billion dollars and that translates to net income for right around 12.3 billion dollars we also see the shares outstanding over at Meta is declining they do have a buyback in place now which we'll see on their statement of cash flows but first, in terms of the balance sheet, this is probably the part of the company that doesn't get enough credit. The balance sheet over at Meta is probably, I'd say, a top five balance sheet on Wall Street, sitting on close to, call it $58 billion in cash and marketable securities. That is a staggering, staggering number. Just the amount of cash this company has, that's more than all of their total current liabilities and more than all of their long-term debt. So this company is just cash loaded to the sky. They still have another, call it $100 billion dollars in property and equipment as they continue to invest heavily in their AI infrastructure. So the fact that this company still has so much cash and cash equivalents on their balance sheet is probably the main reason why this company can continue to burn through large sums of money on their reality lab segment. Just the fact that this company continues to print so much from advertising and then continues to sit on 
nearly $60 billion in cash and cash equivalents is a pretty remarkable figure. And while not sitting on too many liabilities also. In terms of the cash flows, we have that $12.4 billion net income figure. We get to add back some stock-based compensation to the tune of $3.5 billion. Did tick up year over year, but not as fast as your net income, which is good to see. And we print nearly $19 billion in operating cash flows. From that, we subtract roughly $6.4 billion in property, plant, and equipment. That's their capex. And so this company generating close to $12 billion in free cash flow. And a lot of that goes in the form of purchasing their common stock as they bought back close to $15 billion of their common stock. And then as we saw last quarter, they announced a dividend. And this is the first quarter where that is recognized on their cash flows, paying out roughly $1.2 billion in terms of their dividend. Now, one thing also, this company did raise its total expense range and total capex range for the full year up to 35 to $40 billion. Previously, capex was supposed to be in the range of 30 to $37 billion. So when we see roughly $6.4 billion worth of capex in this most recent quarter, if you annualize this, you only get to a figure, let's say close to 28, 29 billion dollars. And so expect Meta to continue to invest more and more in their capex as the year progresses, just simply based on the fact that they're anticipating close to 35 to $40 billion in terms of CapEx. And that also bumped up their total expenses up to 96 to $99 billion. Previously, it was between 94 and $99 billion. So just slightly bumped up on their total expenses due to higher CapEx supporting their AI roadmap. And so this company continues to invest heavily in AI, which I think is absolutely paying off. You look at the impressions and price per ads, Meta has certainly figured out how to incorporate AI in terms of advertising on their family of apps, and that is proving to be wildly successful. Now, in other news that came out earlier today, President Joe Biden did ultimately sign the bill forcing a ban on TikTok or at least divestment from its Chinese parent company, ByteDance. And I think there's a nine month window in order for TikTok to either be sold to a US company or it simply will be banned in the US. And that really get, puts it on a deadline as nine months, really not a long time, basically gives you to the end of the year to see what happens with TikTok. And I think this bill is extremely important for Meta considering TikTok is really, I would say, Meta's number one competitor in the US, in North America, just the fact how popular it is. And if you can have an app like this banned, yeah, a lot of those advertising dollars that are probably going to TikTok right now will ultimately begin to flow once again back to Instagram, back to Facebook. I'd say there's really three tiers of advertising companies you have, the number one being Facebook or Meta, and then you have your tier two companies like a Google, Amazon, even Netflix, I would say, now with their advertising tier. And then the third tier of companies, I would say, is like a Snapchat or a Pinterest. And a ban of TikTok ultimately helps, I think, all three tiers, but it does help the top of the top, I think, a lot more because Meta's number one competitor, certainly, in my opinion, is absolutely TikTok. And divestment from TikTok will ultimately lead to more watch time, more engagement, and more advertising dollars on Instagram. Now, earlier in the week, Meta also did say that the Quest headset operating system will open up to other device makers in order to really challenge Apple and sort of Apple's walled garden approach to how they cater their devices and their operating system. And so Meta did say that their operating system will be open to other competitors like an Asus, like a Lenovo, that they expect to make those headset devices at some point down the road and will be using Meta Horizon operating system. This is different from Apple's take on it. They have their Vision Pro and basically have their own OS that they'll likely keep closed to themselves, similar to how they have their iOS or their Mac OS closed off to their own devices. And so Facebook really taking the approach of a Microsoft Windows where they're sort of licensing out the OS for other device makers or similar to how Google has Android OS that other device makers, other smartphone makers can operate on. Now, I think this is not a huge deal for Meta as a company overall. I think it more so caters towards Mark Zuckerberg's hate towards Apple and Tim Cook. I think he just wants to show that Meta taking a different approach than Apple really showing them up. But I think, look, Apple has been wildly successful having their system closed off to just themselves. And in fact, creates a sort of ecosystem where you need to own all of Apple's products to have a seamless integration. I think it's been wildly successful for Apple in the past. No reason to think why it won't be again. And so really, I think not a huge deal, the fact that Meta really opening up their OS to other hardware makers, at least as of now, at least while these reality headset sales are absolutely muted, 
yeah, there's really not a big deal in opening that operating system up for others to use. Now in the after hours, we are extending our losses down to close to 16%. That is an absolutely staggering, staggering drop in the after hours for shares of Meta. Look, we had this gap in our previous set of earnings and it looks like we're filling that nearly perfectly in these earnings and likely tomorrow if these losses hold will make a large gap downwards we were in a long long-term uptrend dating back to november of 2022 and that has decisively been broken down i think if you have these after hour losses hold there's a good chance meta comes in fills this gap tomorrow and then likely heads lower really the next level of support is what we have marked out for a long time here back at 360 dollars a share seems like a far ways away but considering shares are down close to 16 percent in the after hours certainly is possible and look you'd still be making a pretty steep uptrend a pretty well-defined uptrend and this large pullback would be your opportunity to buy shares of meta if at least you haven't already and you were considering certainly a drop like this is when you look to add to a position in meta especially considering that the valuation on this company not trading overly expensive in fact i'd say not trading expensive at all you're trading right around 24 times this year's earnings despite growing close to 34 probably faster at 35 36 percent on your bottom line and considering these after hours decline you're probably trading closer to a 20 to 22 times on a price to earnings multiple so certainly that is not expensive for the amount of growth that you're getting on top of that you'll likely have some secular trends with the ban of tiktok or at least the sale of tiktok over in the us and then lastly we're seeing advertising continue to just perform extremely strong with your ad impressions growing year over year and your average price per ad continuing to grow year over year the only downside of this report i could really point to is the fact that they are going to up their investment in ai by upping their capex and the slightly slightly lower total revenue guidance for the upcoming q2 but even that just coming slightly underneath wall street i think not a huge deal considering the top end of their range still sitting at 39 billion dollars that is a revenue figure basically where wall street was expecting this company to come i think this 16 percent drop in the after hours certainly in my opinion is an overreaction these earnings proved in my opinion to be extremely strong over at meta showing that advertising is coming back up and continuing to perform extremely strong in my opinion like I said, an overreaction to a phenomenal first quarter for Meta. That was my take on shares of Meta. While an extremely strong quarter, you are experiencing a pretty substantial decline in the after hours. I would wait for the stock to settle out and stabilize before really jumping into this head first. Let me know your thoughts in this one in the comments section below. As always, thanks so much for listening and I'll catch you guys in the next video.